In this lesson, I'm gonna be sharing with you my top seven citrus care tips for container growth featuring Four Winds Growers, America's leading distributor of citrus trees in containers, boxed just like this, shipping to virtually every state in the United States. And yes, you can be enjoying citrus in containers in Northern United States and even into Canada and beyond with the simple care tips that I'm gonna be sharing with you in today's video. Enjoy. There's nothing better then go into your citrus trees and picking the fruit that's been sun-kissed that same day. By picking your own fruit, you're enjoying the best nutritional value that nature can offer. And most importantly, we're gonna be discussing growing your fruits organically. Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cold plants, and I'm excited to share that fourwindsgrowers.com offers Ivory Organic brand products fourwindsgrowers.com is America's leading distributor of semi-dwarf citrus trees. And a standard sized tree ideally would be in the ground and grow to those horticulturally large trees that are on average 15, 20, 30 plus feet. The goal is not to be growing massive trees. With the backyard orchard, the goal is to enjoy the diversity and the selection and the flavors and also all the seasons that you can be harvesting citrus, specifically, Four Winds Growers offers over 50 varieties of citrus, so you could be enjoying citrus year round. Additionally, Four Winds Growers makes available for sale the purchase of fig trees, avocado trees, olives, berries, pomegranates, peaches, and so much more. I wanna share a little bit more about what Four Winds Growers is all about and the passion that inspires them and hopefully the passion that'll inspire you as well to expand your growing into containers and to integrate some of these semi-dwarf fruit trees which are ideal candidates for the backyard orchard. Even if you were to plant them in ground, these trees will grow slightly larger than they otherwise would in container. And again, it will be the ideal candidate for those lessons that we've talked about over the many years for the backyard orchard culture where you're growing fruit trees that are gonna be within reach compared to be growing standard fruit trees which you would find ideally in the commercial orchard. So a little more background about Four Winds Grower which is a fourth generation young and still growing company inspiring families and growers across America to integrate citrus into their home backyard. Specifically it reads, family grown for growing families in the late 1940s Floyd Dillon's dream was to grow dwarf citrus trees, which could still produce full-size fruit. Gardeners would love the small form, evergreen foliage, sweet fragrance, attractive flowers, and flavorful fruit. Researchers at UC Riverside told them about the dwarf rootstocks that were compatible with fruiting varieties. Floyd then used them, splicing twig grafts, a unique method for grafting citrus. His vision of growing dwarf citrus for gardeners becomes a reality. Four Winds Growers is a family tradition now and its fourth generation as a family owned and operated nursery. They are proud to offer you the highest quality dwarf citrus grown with experience and care. Four Winds Growers also has a YouTube channel. I encourage all of you guys to follow and continuously learn from as well. For your convenience, I'm putting the link to their YouTube video in the video description below. In addition to the comments, simply click on it. When you get there, don't forget to subscribe and hit the push bell notification so you get notification as soon as a new educational lesson is shared by them. This particular lesson integrates many of the lessons taught in Aaron Dillon's educational YouTube video titled, how to plant an entry size citrus tree into a bigger pot. And the founder of Four Winds Growers is Floyd Dillon Sr. And he introduced the concept of dwarf citrus trees and semi-dwarf citrus trees and the ability and the flexibility of incorporating them into the landscape, into containers, growing them as a spalier, and just enjoying them in their smaller form, ideal again for that backyard orchard. I'm reading from their website. Today, dwarf citrus is a common site in nurseries throughout the West and has grown successfully in containers throughout the world. The adaptability of dwarf citrus to container growing has made them increasingly popular outside of traditional citrus growing areas. They are most easily moved indoor for winter protection and outdoors in the warmer seasons. And you can learn more if you go to their learn tab, you can click on brochures and guides for their PDF links and one of them is inspired by Al Wilcoxon titled, 
Indoor Citrus Guide. And there's a 10 page PDF manual. You can click there and he will discuss citrus love soil that drains well, fertilizing citrus, acclimating them to the outdoors. If you're bringing them indoors for the winter to protect them from the winter freeze, controlling pests, bringing indoors for winter, discusses fluorescent lights for indoor growth, and even has beautiful diagrams explaining citrus care in great depth. Something that'll greatly benefit you in that link I'm gonna be sharing below in the video description as well as the comments below for your convenience. So when you go to fourwindsgrowers.com and you pick your citrus trees or other fruit trees, you're gonna have a choice of either an entry size, which is a smaller tree, or their premium size, which is a larger tree. And under the tree sizes, it's going to explain to you the size container you should be looking for. For their entry size trees, such as this one, which we're gonna be unboxing shortly, they recommend about a 10 to 12 inch size container. Whereas with their larger trees, they recommend anywhere from about 12 to 14 inches. The reason for not going with a much larger container is it's gonna take a while for those roots to grow and fill in the container size. And you don't want those roots to be in that soil, especially around that root ball, to be sitting damp and moist and possibly contributing towards root rot. So the goal is to graduate the container size and keep in mind that even if you've got a citrus living in a container right now, it's a good practice every three to five years to replant it back in the container, trimming the roots and trimming the plant. And the ideal time for that, just to let you know, is gonna be late winter, just before early spring. And ideally you'll time it before the citrus plant goes into bloom, which also sometimes occurs during the winter months. But as you better get to know your citrus tree from year to year, you're gonna become the master gardener and you're going to best learn the care needs for that specific citrus or other container plants you've got growing in a container. So now that we've selected the containers, what you need to make sure of is that you've got a container with good drainage. This particular container that I've selected has no drain holes. If you come in a little closer, you can see that there's no drain holes. And even if I turn it over, it tells you right here that you can punch, and I've got my screwdriver, you can punch a hole like so but two holes is not sufficient drainage. You're gonna need a lot more drain holes. So what I've done is I've got this drill bit that we're gonna be adding to our power drill and we're gonna add a few more holes. And now, as you can see, we've got sufficient drain holes. So I'm gonna start off with the smaller container just because it's gonna be easier to fill it in and, and demonstrate all of the methods, but it's exactly the same practice for the larger container. And I'm gonna show you the results of both at the end. Another factor when selecting your container is if it's gonna be in full sun, consider going with a lighter color. The darker containers are naturally gonna absorb more heat, contribute towards evaporation of that soil and possibly even contribute to burning those roots on the outer part of the container. Another product I love using are terracotta pots for a second reason being that the terracotta absorbs a lot of moisture, helping to reduce the number of times you need to water that plant in a particular week, but we'll be getting to watering shortly. So before I fill the container up with the potting mixes around me, the first thing I'm gonna do is block the holes at the bottom using what I've got over here is some P-Rock, some more medium-sized stones, and remember how I mentioned I like terracotta? This here is gonna help also in addition to blocking these drain holes somewhat, allowing moisture to pass by keeping the potting soil from draining through. But this terracotta pot is also gonna help towards absorbing water. So we're gonna add some of the terracotta pot pieces. And then we're gonna go with our more medium sized stone. And then our smaller stones on top. And we're gonna add about an inch and this is gonna help with drainage so that the soil again doesn't drain out of the container through those drain holes, which are larger than the potting mixes behind me. By putting these drain rocks at the bottom, it's gonna help pull and draw the water out and at the same time keep the potting soils that we're adding to the container in. In the YouTube lesson taught by Aaron Dillon of Four Winds Growers, he said a good soil to consider when filling up your container is to use something like this. And this one here is a palm cactus and citrus mix. You're gonna want something that cactus, which don't really need much water 
and citrus is another one where the goal when we get to the watering is going to want to be to make sure that you water your plants and when you do you water them well but then you allow the soil to dry between waterings but never bone dry and you're also going to want to make sure as it does here on the bag that it says that the product is for pots you're going to want to make sure that it's a product specifically designed for container life as a lot of the other products that are designed for in ground break down far too quickly and it's going to result in your citrus trees that you're planting in a container to collapse basically the roots that are going to be growing throughout the container as that soil medium breaks down if it's got a lot of organic matter it's going to collapse and the roots are going to get damaged and it's going to affect the overall health and life of the tree so make sure that when you're planting your potted plants that you deal with the potting soil specifically look for something that's citrus and cactus many years ago and it's also part of that lesson that was taught by al will coxon in canton illinois and i taught it many many years ago here on the ivory organics youtube channel is making your own potting mix if you happen to have these ingredients on your property and i'll tell you the value of each of them when making your own potting soil you can do a one third of any one of these three products that i've got to the right of this cactus and citrus mix you can take one third of vermiculite, which when you take a look at it here, kind of look like pirate fool's gold. And you can take one third part perlite, which here looks like puff snow. And then the third item, and keep in mind, these ingredients are all organic ingredients and they're mineral and they will not break down. But the third ingredient over here is sphagnum, peat moss, also an armory listed organic product. And when you take a look at this, this here is made out of plant material. This will break down, but it will break down very slowly. And this is gonna be one third peat, one third perlite, one third vermiculite, and the mixture is gonna create the potting soil mix. A potting soil mix should as these products read as well on there is it prevents soil compaction. It helps potting mixes and garden soils, helps prevent soil compaction again, promote strong root development, um, used with potting mixes and garden soils. So, um, and another one improves drainage and aeration, all very important considerations for plants living a container life. And so those are the benefits of the product. And again, another important value as we just read is improving drainage, making sure that also the product can retain moisture. If you simply use your native soil in your potting mix, that's gonna dry out far too quickly. Whereas this here is gonna help retain moisture better between your waterings than using virtually any other product. So make sure that you use products that are specifically designed for container growth. And that is your tip when it comes to your potting soil mix. Let's get to filling up the container now. Because I demonstrated both types of soil, I'm gonna be backfilling it now with both types of soil and explaining a couple more helpful tips along the way. So the goal is to add about another inch of the garden soil. And what I like doing also at the very bottom of the container again, further contributing towards improving drainage is adding a little bit more of the perlite. So we're gonna be doing that as a bottom dressing. We're gonna do it one more time as a top dressing too for another purpose, which I'm gonna explain in just a minute. So yeah, there you go, tons of perlite. So for those of you that have been following me over the years, you know that I've dedicated a lot of my backyard landscape to lemon trees. Specifically, I've got Meyer lemons and I've got a Eureka lemon and I've got a Ponderosa lemon and I've got that variegated pink lemon or the VPL, as well as a Lisbon lemon. So lots of lemons. And it was only natural to kind of swing now and balance the citrus collection with the oranges. And so what I've selected today is a Mineola Tangelo. And the Mineola is a cross between a tangerine and a pomelo. And I'm reading this directly from the Four Winds Growers website. Deep reddish orange colored fruit in January to March, bell shaped fruit. In many locations, wait to harvest until spring for juicy, sweet tangerine flavor. Mineola blossoms are self incompatible and must be cross pollinized by a suitable pollinator to assure good fruit set. And there's no issue with cross pollination because virtually any other citrus on your property 
can help cross pollinate the flowers of the mineola. So we have no issues with that. Most mandarin types are suitable pollinators with the exception of the satsuma. The larger citrus that we're gonna be unboxing shortly is the Li Nova and it goes by some other names. It's a cross between the Li and the Nova mandarins. Li Nova is an early ripening mandarin. The Florida hybrid is sometimes known as Supernova or the USDA 88-2. It's a seedless, sweet, and incredibly juicy fruit. The ripe fruit has a deep red orange, thin rind that makes it for easy peeling. And the fruit is on the larger side for a mandarin. And there's a ton of links there again for grow tips and so forth and if you want additional details on that particular fruit. But now let's get to opening our Mineola. So when you receive your container from Four Winds Grower, you're gonna notice that the upright side has all the information going vertically in the right direction. And what you're gonna do is simply open the box along the length, like so. You can see the staples that went into it. You can kind of feel that the weight is on this side. This is where obviously the, the pot and the soil is going to be found. And we're now opening it like so. What a beautiful citrus tree. Here's the description of the fruit. Mineola tangelo. It also includes a how to grow instructional guide to help you achieve the maximum success with your newest addition citrus to your backyard orchard. So now that we've unwrapped our citrus, the goal now is, and this is now care tip number three, is to see where the roots are flaring to make sure that we're backfilling the soil at the right level. We're gonna wanna make sure that that root flare is near the top. You wanna make sure that there's at least a half an inch to an inch for watering the container. Aside from that, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the plant is as high as possible in the container because over the years, again, the plant will gradually settle. And again, depending on the quality of the potting soil you're using, the longer it's gonna be before that plant begins to compact its root system. And eventually, again, every three to five years, it's a good practice to repot your plant, even if it's going right back into the same container. And there are lessons I'll try to put in the video description below where we've demonstrated exactly that. So you can take a look here at the bottom. You can see that there's some good drainage holes around the plant when it was once living among hundreds, if not thousands of other citrus trees. And now it's here in our backyard orchard system. Take a look at all of those beautiful roots. Some of the soil near the top is beginning to crumble as it is a practice to sometimes add more soil to the top of the plant as again, it begins to settle within the container. But you're gonna wanna make sure that there isn't soil going up the tree trunk and in this case there isn't you can see that the soil was and where the moisture is is right above that last root that's beginning to flare so this is an excellent practice a lot of other nurseries will sometimes backfill the container several inches up the trunk leading to a phenomenon known as stem rot and that contributes to the rotting of the stem and eventually shortening the life of the plant so some people wonder why is my plant not working well well sometimes you might have to dig it out of the ground and give it another fresh start if you haven't already destroyed that plant's life. But in this case, we've got an excellent, beautifully healthy plant, and we're gonna now position it into the container and adjust the first layer of soil so that that root flare is gonna be around the height, about one inch below the rim of the container. And I think we got it just right. And now let's continue backfilling. So now we're adding some gentle pressure along the way with our fingertips, making sure that the soil and that potting mix is in contact with the roots of the Mineola. So now just as we did on the very bottom of the container, we're gonna be doing on the very top of the container using perlite, which again is that product that looks like puffed popcorn and snow. And I'm gonna add a nice generous amount almost at a rate of again one third to one half and we're going to integrate that into the topsoil and what that's going to do now is again help to improve drainage and also prevent the risk of stem rot and even root rot near the top by making sure that there isn't excessive moisture near that root flare and those beginning introductory roots even though there should be perlite throughout the potting mix or at least ingredients that contribute towards good drainage like perlite, 
and now we're done. If you can come in a little closer, you'll see where that root flare is. And all we've done now is cover it with about one fourth. There's the root flare right there starting. And we've just simply covered it no more than by a fourth of topsoil, which includes a lot of the perlite. So next you're going to notice that the tree is staked and for now and just temporarily we're going to remove this stake and it's a good practice especially if you see the ties getting too tight on the tree it's a good practice to take them off and just make sure that there's a loose secure to the tree and we're going to re-secure it and i'm going to show you how in just a minute but take a look at all these ties that we're going to be taking off And we're even gonna take off the tag for now. You're gonna see why in just a minute. And the stake's coming off just for now. We're gonna restore it shortly. Tip number four, fertilizer. A lot of products on the market always talk about NPK, which stands for N-nitrogen, which offers the plant nice green leaves and contributes towards growth. P for phosphorus, which contributes to flowering and fruit, which we want. And K, which is potassium helps contribute towards root strengthening, development, disease resistance. But that's three macronutrients, but plants require six macronutrients. And that led to the development of the Ivory Organic All-Purpose Fertilizers, which offer your plants all of the six macronutrients that plants need, which include magnesium, which is the heart of the chlorophyll molecule, sulfur, which also contributes to the plant's greening, and calcium. Calcium can be found in the cell walls of all the plants. As the plant continues to grow, it needs more and more calcium as the, it's the building block of every single plant cell. So NPK, MG, S, C, A. Six macronutrients and the Ivory Organic products have it all. The Ivory Organic Super Blend also includes azomite as of early 2021. And azomite offers the plants a lot of the micronutrients, those elements that they require in less abundance. And by giving the plants all the macro and micronutrients, the plant's gonna have everything it needs to succeed. And so what we're going to do here today is we're going to add just a tablespoon of the Ivory Organics All-Purpose Super Blend Fertilizer, which is now also OMRI certified for organic gardening. And we're just going to add a tablespoon near the topsoil, like so. What we're also going to do is I want to add some beneficial life from the garden, which is going to help contribute and jumpstart all of the, in the organic garden it's important to have good organic soil that is rich in organic matter. That organic matter includes earthworms, beneficial bacteria, and mycorrhiza. That's gonna help break down the organic products into the elements and help fuel and feed the plant. And so to jumpstart the beneficial life in this potting soil environment and with that organic fertilizer that we've introduced, we need some organic life. And even though that potting soil probably has some, and even the fertilizer has some, let's go and give it some more. Follow me. So here I am next to one of the fruit trees in my garden. I'm just pulling back some of the mulch, which is a wood layer helping to insulate the soil. And we're gonna take a scoop. So as you can take a look here, you know, we've got some worms, but it's not just the worms that we're going after. It's the beneficial bacteria, mycorrhiza, that's all part of that network. That's especially near that topsoil. We're gonna introduce this into the container, follow me. And we're simply gonna mix that into the topsoil as well. And with the fertilizer, and if you take a look here for your potted plants, there's specific instructions right here for your potted plants. It says apply one tablespoon of the Ivory Organic All-Purpose per gallon size container, up to five tablespoons every 30 days during the growing seasons. The growing seasons being spring, summer, and early fall. And if you take a look at the label, you can see here it's the Super Blend plus Azomite um, 333. That's your NPK and contains all of the primary nutrients, that NPK, and also your secondary nutrients, calcium, magnesium, and sulfur, which basically make up all of the macronutrients plants need, including the trace minerals found in the azomite product. One other quick lesson when it comes to fertilizing your trees, and as we mentioned, the growing seasons, the growing seasons naturally being spring, summer, and early fall, you're gonna to wanna to make sure when it comes to the amount of fertilizer you're adding to your products, you're gonna to wanna to start really slow in winter. You can even do a foliar feed, which is on the fertilizer directions you can find on the back of the Ivory Organics All-Purpose Fertilizers. So you're gonna start slow in winter, maybe just stick to foliar feeding to make sure your plant has everything it needs to have maximum blooms and ultimately supporting maximum fruit. So winter and spring, 
We recommend starting slow, maybe doing half dose amount of fertilizer, especially with your container plants. It recommends monthly feeding because as you continuously water your container plants, there's a lot of leaching happening on. Summer is your maximum dose, whatever the container size is, um, up to five tablespoons per the maximum size container. But again, the fact you're repeating it monthly, you're gonna make sure that there's continuously food available to the plant. So as we go, spring, summer, and then by fall, you're gonna to wanna to cut back on the fertilizer, going back into winter, where again, you may be sticking to just full your feeding and not necessarily feeding the soil as the plant's absorption of minerals and nutrients in the winter months is at its all year low. So the reason you don't fertilize your plants in the winter months, at least not at the soil level, is that the soil is cooler than plants metabolisms at its lowest point. In spring now, we're approaching 12 hours of sunlight. By summer, it's gonna be 14 hours of sunlight. The plant's metabolism is peaking, it's growing, it's flowering, it's fruiting, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure it has everything it needs for optimal success. We've got these wood chips from our local Griffith Park. Our city makes this stuff available from all the trees that they grind up throughout the city. Diversity of plants, diversity of minerals as these break down, continuously feeding the soil. But the value that mulch has, in addition to all that I've already said, is one, it's gonna help retain moisture between waterings. Two, in the summer, it's gonna help keep the soil a lot cooler. In the winter, it's gonna help offer some insulation as well, keeping the soil warmer. And again, each watering is gonna be breaking down, helping to feed those soil organisms, ultimately benefiting the plant. The next step is watering. Before I begin to water, I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that the container plant is in a saucer. And the saucer is only gonna be there to make sure that the water and the minerals get absorbed by the plant. And the saucer, if it remains wet for more than 24 hours, remove the saucer to avoid the risk of, again, the potting soil getting oversaturated, over wet, over damp, and ultimately contributing towards root rot. And we don't want that to happen. We've worked so hard to make sure we have a good draining soil we don't want that soil to now get oversaturated with moisture, but we don't want to also lose the minerals. So again, if there's more moisture there after 24 hours and that potting soil hasn't absorbed at all, you can use that mineral rich water that's remaining to water your other garden plants around your property. And as Aaron Dillon says in that educational lesson, he said, you're going to want to give the plant two good soaks. So make sure you water it really, really well. And if it won't drink anymore, just wait a few minutes, come back and give it that second soak. As you can see, I've been watering and this oil is drinking it up as fast as we can go. I'm gonna continue to water the plant. In a few more minutes, I'm gonna revisit it, add some more water. I will really wanna see that water coming out of the pot and beginning to saturate that saucer so that that soil really has a good chance to absorb and retain that moisture. Another important lesson when it comes to watering is to mimic nature. And the point with that is, is to make sure the entire soil medium, think about all that beneficial life and organisms that are within the soil. We just added the earthworm, but it's not just the earthworm. Again, it's a beneficial bacteria mycorrhizal network that's gonna be now created within the soil and they all need water, not just the plant. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure when you water, just like mimicking nature, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you mimic nature in the sense of sprinkling and watering that entire root zone area. Don't just water one side of the plant if that water moisture just continues to go down one side of the plant, it's to the detriment of the other side. So make sure that when you water, if you're doing a drip irrigation system in particular, make sure that it has a few drip irrigation systems around it to make sure that again, that it's watering and mimicking rain, watering the entire potting soil root zone area. So until that soil is nearly completely dry, that's when you're gonna to wanna to rewater and not just a sprinkler amount as you would water your lawn maybe in that top inch. You're gonna to wanna to make sure when you're watering it, you're soaking the entire root ball, the entire container to the point that water is coming out and even you can allow it to be on there for no more than 24 hours before you then allow the plant to really start drying out and getting ready for that next watering. In regards to the watering schedule, again, depending on if it's spring, summer, fall, or winter, in the summer, you may water as frequently as two to three times per week. Again, using that test I mentioned about making sure you wait until that soil is nearly bone dry between waterings. But again, two to three waterings a week in the summer, but your fall and spring and the cooler temperate and also the sun in the sky is a little lower, the days are a little shorter, you may only need one tops two waterings, again, in those spring and fall months. 
And then in winter, if it's raining and your plants are outside, obviously no water, or maybe once a month, maybe twice a month. But again, you're using that test again with the bone dry, making sure that the soil is never bone dry and that it's getting, when you do water it, a ton of water. Make sure it gets very saturated so you don't have to revisit and rewater it more frequently than necessary. Tip number seven, and I'm most excited about this, is making sure you whitewash your plant. Trees and nurseries, from the time they were born until the time they finally come to your garden, have always been in groups. The canopy of each tree shading the tree trunk and branches of this neighboring tree. But now it's in your container, standing alone on your property, and now it's getting, here we are in springtime, over 12 hours of sunlight per day. By summer, 14 hours of daylight per day and you're gonna to wanna to protect that tree trunk. Historically, gardeners have been using latex paint, tar-based products, which are designed to last 100 years and will ultimately contaminate your garden soil as the plant grows and shedding those latex and tar-based products back into the soil. Ivy Organic has the protection against damaging summer sunburn, insects, and rodents. And it says, for use on your roses, fruit, nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs for use in organic production and healthier than latex and tar-based products. This is Armory certified and registered for organic use. And what we're going to do is we are now going to protect the plant using this product, which comes with the base powders and a bubble wrapped oil vial. And now we have a product we can now protect the plant from damaging summer sunburn in an all organic way and this one here again is color white also available in colors brown and green and now we're most excited that four winds growers makes available a lot of the ivory organics products and is the first one in the united states to make available for retail color grayish which we believe is the closest color for matching your citrus tree trunk. So let me just show you what that looks like now that we've got color white on the plant. Let's go and change that to the color grayish, which is a gray beige color, which beautifully matches your citrus tree trunks. For those of you that are curious, the oils that I just added, I usually explain, include castor and cinnamon and clove, garlic, peppermint, rosemary, and spearmint. And then the inert ingredients you can see are lime oxide, limestone, mica, which is like a clay, some milk proteins that help bond the product almost as long lasting as paint, silica and diatomaceous earth, which is another insect repellent. Those oils are insect and rodent repellent. Active ingredient oils. We're now stirring up the color grayish. Super excited to show and share this off to you. So it's still light enough that it's reflecting a lot of heat and a lot of light off the tree trunk. That way the plant doesn't waste a lot of time, energy, and effort on repairing first, second, and third degree sunburns, which we've demonstrated over the years. And now it can focus on growing and flowering and ultimately giving us a ton of delicious fruit. The back of every can of the Ivory Organic products, whether it be three in one or the whitewash products, has specific instructions on how to use the product for the brush on directions that we just demonstrated, as a foliar spray to protect the entire plant, the leaves and all, and the tiny stems that you can't brush the product on, as well as a tree paste for protecting grafting wounds and pruned branches. So, what we also have is the ready to use product, which is also available at fourwindsgrowers.com, and you can now spray the entire plant structure like so. And when you take a look, you can see we've just whitewashed and protected organically all of the leaves on the plant. Overall, the product's now helping as an anti-transparent. It's also helping with transplant shock, and it's gonna get your plant off to a much better start. Ideal at the time of transplanting, repotting, and also to beat the summertime daytime highs. Additionally, as Al Wilcoxon mentions in his Stritches Care 10 page guide that you can also find at fourwindsgrowers.com, it's a great time to also spray your plant when you're transitioning the plants from the indoor life back to the outside environment. So Ivory Organic, ready to use, foliar spray, stem spray, total plant protection, plant guard. So I told you we're gonna revisit putting the stake back in position. We're now gonna restake the tree. 
to make sure that it maintains its upright position as the tree trunk and branches get stronger. We're now going in with our tie and we only need a single tie now. It's gonna be loosely adjusted. The knot goes against the stake and not against the living tree that's gonna be getting larger, but the stake is not gonna be growing. And so here's the stake. We now wrap our citrus tree like so to maintain that vertical height in case there's a wind or an animal that might decide to climb on it. This is gonna help maintain that upright position. And you can see that there's room now between the tie and the tree. So as the tree begins to grow and expand, that tie is not gonna be in the way. And we're gonna obviously be visiting the plant, especially every time we come to water it. We're gonna be monitoring and looking at that among other things. And now let's put the label back on the tree so we know what we've just done. And that's it. That concludes our lesson planting the Four Winds Grower Citrus Tree. I encourage all of you guys to visit fourwindsgrowers.com. I'm also including their YouTube link to Four Winds Growers YouTube in the video description below. Be sure to subscribe and hit that push bell notification so you can follow on all of their educational lessons as soon as they make them available. Also, if you've enjoyed this lesson, be sure to give us that thumbs up and share it with your gardening friends and family. As always, keep growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all happy gardening.